Am I in frame right you, there? You are. Okay. Hey, this is Craig and Brad with ProLight Gear, and we're going to do a quick follow-up video. I just covered uh, how to develop a cold weather or winter clothing system, and in this video we want to talk about uh, breathability of some of your uh, different layers and how that comes into play in determining which jacket or mid layer you're going to bring with you depending on, on what activity you're, you're going to be doing and what the temperature is. Yeah, different membranes are going to actually, the breathability is going to affect how warm they are. Something like Gore-Tex that doesn't really have the greatest air permeability is going to trap a little bit of a microclimate and preserve a little bit more body heat over something like an Event or a Neo Shell, which is going to breathe incredibly well, trap very little humidity, and have very little of a microclimate created. Right, and I think, you know, Brad and I represent two opposite ends <laughs> of the spectrum in terms of, uh, you know, what clothing layers we would uh, uh, use on any given activity. Uh, you know, if we're climbing the same route, uh, I tend to be dressed far warmer than Brad is simply because that's my physiology as I tend to get cold. So this is actually a jacket that I was just wearing in the previous video. It is Gore-Tex. Um, I don't use it for all my activities, but I do use it for ice climbing simply because I tend to get pretty cold when I'm right next to uh, the ice. Uh, it's good, good wind resistance, good water resistance not breathable, but in this case, that's an advantage for me, not having it breathable, yeah, whereas that would not work for you at all. You no, know, and flash off, flash on sports, this is a good thing, kind of like skiing. It's going to keep you warmer on the chairlift as well. It's going to retain more of that humidity. So when you're climbing, putting on a lot of physical exertion, and stopping to belay me, you need that extra little bit of warmth retention. This jacket does a good job of that. That's what Brad is referring to when he says flash on, flash off. You're going from a period of high exertion to a period of no or very little exertion. Yeah. And what we're going to do here, this is the bubbler. It's a little test that uses a little bit of air pressure underneath the membrane to show how truly breathable oh, you don't want it in there yet. a membrane is. And so basically we're going to set this on here and pour water over the top of this membrane to show you the bubbles coming through. And so we're going to tip the camera forward here. Let me know when you're ready to start taking a look at this. I'm going to push down on the edges here just to make sure there's a tight seal around the whole thing. And I'm using this to show you how breathable Gore-Tex is, or how air permeable. Right now there's nothing coming through, so this breathes at 0.0, .0 CFM, cubic feet per minute of air, through the membrane. There's nothing going on there, it's just basically turning itself into a drum head. Alright, so that was Gore-Tex. Which one do you want to do next, Brad? Let's try the event shell. I'm going to drop this off here. All right, so this is another jacket of mine that I use. Let's do it. It's a Rab Super Dew. They don't make it anymore, but it's a good event jacket. Yep, good three layer event. Pull this tight so we get a good seal here. I may have just made it worse. There we go. And this is pretty remarkable how, how breathable uh, Event is in comparison to Gore-Tex. If we were going to send a guide out in the mountains for 300 out of 365 days, we'd probably choose Gore-Tex because the membrane is less fouled by you being inside of it. Event is a wash off in piece because the pores are so big and breathable that it tends to get fouled by your body oils and sweat, salt. So that is actually air coming through the back side of the membrane. No phase change needed at all to move that humid air directly through the jacket and out. And this is a perfect example of why Event is less warm over the Gore-Tex membrane. Now, I think everyone in the shop that's tried, you know, we, we, we test this stuff pretty thoroughly and you can actually tell a real difference when you compare wearing an Event jacket to a Gore-Tex jacket. If you're hike, hiking up the side of a mountain, like your peak bay or something, you're moving fast. If you're wearing a Gore-Tex jacket, you've got your pit zips completely undone, you're venting the front of it, and with e-vent jackets, you don't have to do that. Most of the jackets don't have pit zips built into them anymore. The ones that do, do it because consumers have come to expect pit, pit zips zip. in a hard shell. Right. This is the new membrane from PolarTech called NeoShell. This happens to be the uh, Westcomb Shift. Uh, look forward to a video on this specific jacket in the future. We should have that up later 
on this week. This is NeoShell. This is a polyurethane based membrane rather than an EPTFE like Gore-Tex and Event. And in comparison to Event, you don't see a lot, you don't see a micro amount of bubbles coming through like you do with the Event. But this polyurethane membrane is a thousand percent more breathable than Event membrane itself. And it is just ridiculously quick. And this is actually a two-way breathable membrane. So I'm going to try and get a bubble to come partially, partially way through the membrane, and then we'll pull it back in. So see those bubbles right at the top there? And they go back into the jacket. So this jacket is going to keep you completely windproof to about 50 miles an hour. At 50 miles an hour, you're going to feel a little bit of wind coming through the piece. Uh, not hardly noticeable, but it just helps you keep your dryer yet while you're moving hard and fast. Hey Brad, while we're talking about breathability, should we quickly discuss uh, the differences in wind stopper, old versus new wind stopper? Yes. Do we have that piece here? Yes. That is the new wind stopper DS. Um, gosh, I wish I had the old wind stopper, but those have to believe us when we say the old wind stopper did not breathe at all. No, the old wind stopper really, really did not breathe, and this is an EPTFE membrane underneath. Uh, the face fabric here. So basically, this is Event membrane construction. Uh, Gore-Tex and Event are very similar. They just leave off a polyurethane layer, what they call an oleophobic layer, on the Event to make it more breathable. And that's all they've done with this Gore-Tex windstopper piece. So this is Gore windstopper, which doesn't breathe, you know, as well as the Neo Shell. But boy, it does. It does show air permeability, and it does breathe very well. Whereas the previous generation wind stopper, which they don't designate that via the labeling no. at all, or the, the naming anyway, the hang yeah. tag, you've got to look for the actual difference in the product. Yeah, and most of the, most of the old stuff that didn't breathe is now out of the channel. Okay. So Gore-Tex is a pretty safe buy if you want a good, good soft shell that's going to keep you highly water resistant. They, in theory, could tape the seams on a wind stopper jacket and call it waterproof. They just don't. Uh, because the seams aren't taped, they can't really call it a waterproof piece. But this is going to keep you highly water resistant and highly breathing all day in the mountains and it's very, very stretchy, which I like. Okay, so that wraps up uh, this video. We'll most likely do some additional videos on clothing systems, specifically talking about the technical performance of different fabrics and different uh, options in the market right now. But uh, if you have any questions on any of this, please give us a call at 406-582-0508 or send us an email to info at prolightgear.com. Thanks for watching. Faith.